Alrighty. <laughs> Hello, Facebook. It's Friday and it is 1 p.m., which means it is time for a Live Art Mini. As always, we are ending February with my one of my favorite artists, David Hammonds and Kathleen. Hello. Do you have any shout outs, Kathleen? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen's mom is a huge supporter of the Inside Out Studio, and she also donated some of the materials that we are going to be using today. So, shout out to Kathleen's mom, and <laughs> shout out to all of you at home who watch us every single week, and to all of our sponsors here who help mm -hmm. keep us going. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what we are working with. I'm just going to double check on my phone that we are actually live. Just to make sure, we have had a couple of technical issues in the past. It seems we are, so let's keep going so I don't have to shoot this intro 14 times. Alrighty, so just to get started, I have some images coming in from David Hammonds. He was primarily active during the Harlem Renaissance. So I'm going to fade in some of his fabric arts. Kathleen here is a mostly fabric artist here at the studio. And I absolutely adore her work, as most of you do. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do as an artist? I mostly do uh, crochet items, so like the dolls and stuff. Yeah, and they are super cool. <laughs> Let's see. I'll turn that down just a bit. So to come back in a little bit with David Hammonds one more time. David Hammonds, like I said, is um, right here on the Harlem Renaissance. And we're d showing a couple of images here of his works, which were distressed fabric on canvas and wood boards. He did a lot with um, like stitch fabrics that are shown together, some piece together works, which we are taking some inspiration from today. See, we have a third image here that's actually some trash bags. He stitched them together and then put them on canvas. Um, he highlighted quite a bit of his personal journey through art, and I just really like a lot of his work and his sculptures and his performative art. But I love his use of fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in our creative camera here. And Kathleen is going to go ahead and get started. So can you show them what we're working with today? Just it's got some fabric scraps and some extra pieces of fabric that we have that were all donated to the studio. So we have mostly donated products today, lots of little fabric squares and pieces and a larger piece of fabric over here. And this is just a regular piece of canvas that was um, mixed with some acrylic and gesso. So that Stephanie beat, uh, Stephanie built for us yesterday. So shout out to Stephanie, who is not watching because she is in the studio right now. But maybe she'll watch it when this is posted to YouTube and all of our videos are. So Kathleen can go ahead and get started. You can explain what you're doing as you do it if you'd like, or you can just, I can keep speaking if you'd like. <laughs> I'm gonna start by cutting some of these pieces out because I figured it'd be fun to try to figure out how to make a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, so taking some inspiration from David Hammonds with the um, stitching together of the fabric. Then it kind of reminds me of a piece my mom's was doing called a crazy quilt square where you just take all kinds of fabric and just put them together wherever they'll fit. <laughs> See. My mom does a lot of sewing. <laughs> was that where you first um, learned how to do like fabric arts and stuff? Mm hmm. My mom taught me how to knit when I was about 12 years old. That's really cool. I learned how to knit from my aunt. Her name is Angie. So, Aunt Angie, if you're home watching right now, <laughs> shout out to Aunt Angie. We love her. She taught me how to knit, and I was never very good at it, but I tried my very best. <laughs> Kathleen, sure, she made it a lot farther than I did with it, for sure. And Kathleen's products are all available um, 
mm. online on our store page at all times. She makes quite a few of them and in our store right now. I think your Mirabelle is um, <laughs> out there currently, but yep. <laughs> won't be there for long for sure. I hope so. <laughs> I hope someone sees her and says, mine. <laughs> and which ones are you working on right now? I'm making a prince and princess winter fairy. Let's go ahead and move this camera a little bit up so people can see what you're doing a little bit better over the edge of I'm this. I'm just looking at the different uh, parts of the fabric and saying what I want to cut out. Perfect. So just cutting out the individual flowers on here. Oh, we've got another viewer. So hi, Frank. <laughs> and we can then take the part and cut these out from and just stick it right in the middle. Perfect. So we are in our brand new sensory room or sensory studio mm -hmm. and we just got some new lights installed so it is a little bit bright in here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to dim those a little bit more. I tried to dim them a little bit earlier and I don't think it was enough because the fabric is looking a little bit blown out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to dim those a little bit more so you can see the details in this fabric. But it is, I'm going to hold this one up if that's okay with you Kathleen. Yeah. It is a beautiful um, flowered it's got a lot of detail on that fabric. I just want you guys to be able to see it. So I'm gonna try to dim those lights a little bit more so it picks up better on the camera. And it might be okay to have a little bit of the canvas showing. There's like some of the gaps in the Oh yeah, because we painted the canvas, so it should be okay to have some of those gaps popping through. Mm -hmm. And feel free to layer them on top. It's almost like a collage. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going in cutting out like the flowers and seeing why they fit and then after I'm done with that I'll go in with the big fabric and fill in some of these holes but not all of them I'm going to be cutting a little bit over the over the canvas so people can see a little bit better of what you're doing it's hard to get the angle right we have um it just the, our camera set up on a tripod so the angles are a little bit harder to get but we are trying our absolute best with our setup. And um, to glue down our fabrics, we just have some regular old tacky glue and some washable glue. And for our bigger pieces, I have a staple gun, which I will be using later to adhere some of our fabrics if um, we need to do that. Because yeah. fabric glue works a lot better on fabric than just on plain the... old Elmer's. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you're interested at any point at coming into the studio or coming into our store to see what's going on and seeing what our artists are making, we are open uh, Tuesday to Saturday and we open at 10 a.m. so you can come in and see us. Mighty cool and see some of Kathleen's um, fabric dolls. Mm -hmm. Made by hand. Everything is. Yep. <laughs> oh, and if you want to see into the studio, we are offering um, another community class coming up this month, <laughs> or that's coming up in March, which is next week. We're going to be making some ceramic works, which are my personal favorite, as I am a ceramicist <laughs> and oil painter. So I'm really excited about this one. We're going to be making um, a utensil holder and a set of coasters. <laughs> So if you're interested in that, feel free to go to our website through our Facebook page and sign up. Or you can stop into the store and sign up that way as well. And you can come kind of see what we are doing all the time. Mm -hmm. 
turn the music up in the background and let you guys have a cool ASMR moment of the fabric. <laughs> layer this one on top of that one if you don't like the flat side of that. If you want it to be a more organic shape. Uh, crazy quilt version of this, but I'm just going to go wherever it goes. Cool. Take a look at some of your other scraps you've got going on in the meantime. I don't use a lot. <laughs> glass, like an abstract glass piece. <laughs> Making a three dimensional flower over here. It's mighty fine. <laughs>
So what kind of things does your mom like to make? She can sew, she can somewhat crochet, she says I'm better at it. What does she like to make out of crochet? Sorry, y'all, I'm ending the ASMR moment. <laughs> I'm ending the ASMR. My mom usually like makes stuff that goes with whatever she's making. Like right now, she's trying to do like some Irish lace for a blanket she's been working on. Okay. And it's not really a blanket like what you would lay with and sleep in. More of a, like a hey, this is everything I can do kind of piece. Okay. Show people. Just what she can do. <laughs> so far, it's been looking pretty awesome. <laughs> but yeah, my mom can do so. She can go hand in with the machine. She can knit, because that's where I learned how to knit. She can do some crochet. Really, just anything my mom puts the mind to doing, she can do. It's incredible. It's awesome that you get to learn from her, like, every day. No wonder you can do all the things you can do as well. And you, um, how did you learn how to crochet? Well, she taught me, like, the, like, basics, and then YouTube was starting to really blow up, and I learned a lot from it. <laughs> Because I'm a very visual learner. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, if I can see it, I can do it. It's kind of the way it works for me. But <laughs> before YouTube, that was kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't make videos to delve into that idea. <laughs> yeah, that's outstanding. It's crazy. to that blue. Make sure we're cutting a little bit over the canvas so people can see it. Oh. <laughs> Oops. It's okay. I'm just cutting out the, what looks like uh, someone's uh, sheen piecing or something that yeah. they did. And I'm just putting it Wherever it will fit best. And right now I've got some pretty big gaps that need to be filled. Yeah, and you can always layer. I like when they layer over top, over top of each other and touch. I think it's a really unique kind of um, appeal. Because just like in regular quilts and stuff, everyone everything has to have a seam, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they don't touch and have a seam, then the quilt's just... not going to, it's going to fall apart. Exactly. <laughs> and you don't want that. It's going to be very cold tonight. Mm. That don't sound like fun. <laughs> but I don't have to work tomorrow, so I don't want uh... Enjoy being inside work tomorrow. <laughs> yep, tomorrow is Saturday. So it'll be great. We can enjoy some fun times. But the store is open. So if you are out and about in Hamilton, we are located in downtown Hamilton. You can still stop in and look around the store and kind of check out some cool pieces that you've had your eye on. Our online store is always available, actually, so feel free to check that out, too. Yeah, now we're going to do the part where I'm going to start really overlapping. So I think oh, this is pretty. Yeah, you save the pieces you like the best for last, always, because they're <laughs> going to go on the very top. Well, I saved these pieces because, you know, I hadn't gotten to all this yet. There's still so much. And then to glue it all down, because I haven't even started gluing. Well, I like to I like to wait to glue because you want to arrange them in a 
easy manner. I'm gonna put those ones like here because like, those are really pretty and there's a lot of space there. Those are kind of dark too, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna put them near some lighter stuff. Oh, they really pop. Yeah. You can put those towards the end here because you have some extra and you can always leave that dangling. I know you're not the biggest fan of the idea of leaving, leaving some dangling fabric, but <laughs> it'd be very cool, very cool. But just like David Hammond's, the like canvas is never, canvas is never the end of the creativity, you know? Just like with the dolls, it never, never has to end just on the form. You can always have your dresses and your accessories. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite things to make are the dragons, just because there's, I don't know about you, but I, don't, I haven't seen any dragons that have been flying around. I don't know, maybe I saw a couple. I've seen a couple flying around my backyard. <laughs> it's mostly my dog, but sometimes I swear it's a dragon. <laughs> my mom had a kitty we thought that way about. The way he acted it made you think maybe he is the dragon. Well, he is a little crazy, so sometimes I was half convinced, you know. But yeah, he. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So you, at one point, if you wanted to, you could even take all of these and sew them together and then stretch them across canvas, like stretcher bars. You won't even need the canvas itself as a base. <laughs> take a lot of time, but it would be very, very cool. And unfortunately, I don't have the skill for that one. <laughs> well, give me a couple no. months. Give us a couple months. We'll get you there. Yeah. <laughs> What My that? mom has the skill for that, though, because she's been sewing since I was just a itty-bitty little girl. I mean, there's pictures of me in, like, little dresses and stuff that she used to make. So, <laughs> there's a lot of recently got a hold of one of the dresses she made for me too. <laughs> cool. That's wonderful. Unfortunately, no one can wear them though. No one can wear it. It was made back when I was itty bitty. Yeah. So, <laughs> we might just have to make a doll or something for that one to go in to wear. <laughs> You can make a crochet doll. It might take a little bit, but... <laughs> that one would. It's made for, like, what? Maybe a five, six-year-old? <laughs> yeah, it'd take you a couple years, I think. You could do it. It'd just take you a while. Yeah. And there's some things the yarn companies are doing that's really awesome. Like... Lion Brand has released a yarn called Skein Tone, and it literally looks like someone's skin tip. That's really cool. So I'm able to like match with her right? for more variety. Right? Get as close to someone's skin tone as I can. I know I can't get like beat for beat because we aren't all the same. Mm hmm. I can get as close as I can. That's beautiful. And then this piece, I guess that's it. You can always cover the edges of your canvas. You've got some room over here as well, like on the sides of the canvas. It's like if someone wants to hang it in a room or something and keep the sides exposed, they don't want to frame it. Maybe down here. Because <laughs> this... You can tuck it under some things and like put other stuff on top that you like better. Yeah, because I don't really want to cover that purple piece fully. Yeah, so you can just tuck, uh, move the other people purple pieces on top of that one. Well, the shiny one's okay. Just this darker purple, I don't want to 
cover mm-hmm. completely. Yeah, so we're kind of mixing collage and the um, David Hammond's pieces. Mm-hmm. So we're getting kind of two for one. <laughs> experience with the Harlem Renaissance was always the blankets that look like some like New York City. Yeah, there's all sorts of art. Um, I was always into sculpture more than I was like fabric arts when um, because I'm into sculpture and ceramics and stuff so it's really interesting because you're into fabric arts that you've got that out of the Harlem Renaissance which is amazing. There's all sorts of art that came out of that but um I was excited to see your reference. Kathleen came to me with um, a really interesting quilt. Unfortunately, we are we do not have the time to make a quilt in our half an hour today. Yeah. Um, we only have a couple minutes left today that we can make. Um, we're going to end our stream in uh, about three minutes, so we're going to glue all of this down today off stream, and we will put this up maybe in a later Facebook post for you guys so you can see the end results. But we will be... Um, You'll definitely see it again. This won't be the end of this piece. But um, I always focused on sculpture. So David Hammond did a piece that meant a lot to me, and it was called um, Higher Goals. It was 300-foot telephone poles that had basketball hoops on top of them, and they were covered in individually nailed-in bottle caps, which are very, very small compared to 100-foot telephone poles. Um, And he put them, he put three of them, like a set of three in um, his neighborhood. And I don't know why that piece really stuck to me. It was in like the 1970s and I think New York. And that piece really stuck with me for multiple years. And it's one of my favorite sculptural pieces that I've ever seen. He also did another piece and it was about um, like a yard sale where he sold snowballs on the street. And he really got all of his community involved. And it was like um, a take on street markets and it was a beautiful piece. It was just so fun. And it was getting all of his community involved, like I mentioned. And it's just really exciting to see. I really liked that piece where he sold these little snowballs and these teeny tiny snowballs to these teeny tiny kids in his neighborhood. And seeing those images was really interesting. But yeah, David Hammond's and Higher Goals. If you haven't seen that piece, definitely check it out. It was um, a take on... Obviously, having goals in inner city young kids, specifically boys and their dreams when they went through school and what those should or what those did look like at the time and his reflection on that. I love his art and his direction in it. So I'm going to let Kathleen go ahead and finish up what she has with this, these next couple pieces of fabric. And then we are going to... Um, end the stream so I'm going to say our final shout outs if Kathleen has any more today that she would like to give for sure for her mom for teaching her so much about arts and the joy of creating I'm sure well the biggest thing mom would do is just you know let me show her what I was up to or what I was making and and then went to either give me criticism to help make it better or just, you know, be very supportive in it. That's beautiful. And that's exactly what all mentors should do is <laughs> support your art no matter where it goes and you know, if, and it's, if there's good creative criticism to give, you know, we're willing to it. accept that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we should all be so lucky, and I am extremely glad that Kathleen has been given that chance and that mentor in her life. And I'm so glad that Kathleen has ended up here with us at the Inside Out Studio. <laughs> if you'd like to see her works, feel free to come to our store or visit our online store to learn more about Kathleen and her works. Yeah. Feel free to check out our website or Come to one of our community classes. Like I said, the next one is going to be ceramics. You can make your own utensil holder with me and one of our artists. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our face cam so we can do a final sign off so you're not just staring at our hands, I guess. <laughs> I'll give you a second. This is our handy dandy microphone paintbrush that I have stuck on between two of our tables. Another big thank you to all of our donors and sponsors and everyone watching every single week that keeps coming back and everyone on YouTube that keeps supporting us in any way you know how, whether it be telling Kathleen how much she means to you every day or watching on YouTube <laughs> or buying an ornament every single Christmas. We just want to thank you so much <laughs> and everyone who is able to bring our sensory studio and our sensory room to life. Thank you so much. And with that, you're going to see yeah. you next Thursday. We're going to schedule and we're going to do some pop art next week. So we will see you then. Bye. Thank you so much and goodbye. I think we end in...